Good evening, everybody. So yeah, my name is Taylor. I'm a third year PhD student in the Department of Chemistry. And today I'm going to be talking about my research on turning plastic into hydrogen. Now, I grew up an hour's drive from the beaches of Southern California. And when my family and I would head to the ocean, two things were guaranteed. One, my brother would somehow end up completely covered in sand. And two, the beach would be littered with plastic. But how did we reach this point where plastic is so ubiquitous that it's ending up on every surface of our planet? Well, one of the key things is we've simply made so much plastic. We've produced 8.3 billion tons since 1950. And there are reasons for that. Plastics are enormously versatile and cheap but our use of them is causing problems. So only 25% of all of those plastics are still in use. Only 7% has been recycled. And of that, only 10% has been recycled more than once. Now, besides policy and behavioral issues, there's also techno technological reasons for this lack of recycling. So for example, the plastic might be too small or complex, for example, composites. It might be contaminated with food, which can't be recycled. Or it might simply be more expensive to recycle than it is to purchase virgin plastic. All of this means that we have thrown away 58% of those 8.3 billion tons over the past 65 years. And this causes enormous problems from ocean pollution to landfill overfills like you can see here. Now I'd like you to keep this in mind for a moment while I temporarily switch gears to a second topic that will at first seem unrelated. And that's renewable fuels. So it's becoming increasingly apparent that if we want to mitigate climate change, we need to move away from fuels that release carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Hydrogen has emerged as a potential renewable alternative, namely because it's very energy dense and it only releases water when it's burned. But there is a dark side to hydrogen which is that 96% of it is currently made by breaking down fossil fuels. While this process is very efficient and very fast, it also requires enormous amounts of energy and it releases large amounts of carbon dioxide. So here we are with two problems. On the one hand, we have plastic pollution, and the other, we have these renewable fuels that aren't actually as renewable as we'd like them to be. So what if we could combine these two problems to try to solve them? What if we could transform waste into something useful? And I would like to note that this is actually possible already through a process called pyrolysis. This is basically you just burn plastic or other types of waste, and this releases both hydrogen and carbon dioxide and sometimes other gases as well. But we don't want that CO2. So can we do this transformation in a green way? And that's where my research on photoreforming comes in. So in photoreforming, instead of burning, we're simply using sunlight to transform our plastic into pure hydrogen. To give you a bit more detail, photoreforming only requires four ingredients to make hydrogen. Sunlight, waste, water, and a photocatalyst, which is simply a material that uses the energy and sunlight to make a reaction happen faster. So what happens is our light excites the electrons in our catalyst, giving them enough energy that they're able to drive the breakdown of water into hydrogen. But if the catalyst kept using its own electrons, it would basically just eat itself up. It would decompose and we wouldn't be able to use it anymore. So we need to feed electrons in somehow, which is where the plastics comes in. The photocatalyst basically pulls the electrons out of our plastic, oxidizing it into smaller chemicals as it does so, and thereby releasing electrons that can be used for this hydrogen reaction. 
So photoreforming is basically just two reactions, the breakdown of waste and the production of hydrogen, and you need both of them to happen in order for the overall system to work. And just a brief aside that for the data I'll be presenting today, um, it's the photocatalyst is a carbon nitride nickel phosphide. It's not super important, the material. What is important is that it's cheap, um, easy to produce, and it's much more sustainable than previous catalysts, which used things like platinum or toxic elements like cadmium. But of course the question is, does it work? So this graph is simply showing the amount of hydrogen that we get per amount of plastic that we're using. And you can quite clearly see um, that we are able to produce hydrogen over the course of 50 hours from two types of polymers. So first is polylactic acid in orange, which is just a compostable polymer. And then polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, in the blue, which is very common. It's what your disposable drinks bottles and a lot of plastic um, food packaging is made of. And we're able to convert about 6% of these polymers into hydrogen over the course of a week. So it's still quite slow, but it's a promising start. And what's also interesting is that we're not just producing hydrogen, we're also breaking down these plastics into small chemicals like formate and acetate, both of which are quite valuable platform chemicals which could in the future add an economic benefit to this process. Now while it's great that I can buy polymers from a chemical supplier and produce hydrogen out of them, it would be much better if I could just use real waste um, that I can pick up from my home, for example. Um, so this video is, oops, is showing precisely that. Sorry, it has decided to turn sideways. I'm not sure why this has happened. Um, but basically, this is just a piece of a PET bottle, so just a water bottle. Um, I've stuck it in my solution with my photocatalyst, and when we shine light on it, you can see these bubbles popping off. They're coming side with this. They should be going upwards. Um, but this is actually in real time, this hydrogen we're producing, so this isn't sped up at all. And we can do this with more than just a pure plastic bottle. For example, we can use polyester microfibers, which are um, in a lot of synthetic clothing. Um, we can also use um, a PET bottle that's coated with oil. And by doing this, we're really addressing a couple of the current issues with recycling that I briefly mentioned in that first slide. So with the microfibers, we're addressing plastics that are too small to recycle. And with the oil-coated bottle, we're addressing food-contaminated waste, both of which can't be recycled, but now we can make something useful out of that waste. Now, the next step if you want to make something more industrially applicable is to think about upscaling. So that video I showed, um, the vial was about one centimeter in diameter, so it's a really tiny amount of solution. This one is 11 centimeters in diameter and um, it contains 60 times more solution. And really the most important thing about this graph that I'm showing is that we are able to pr produce the same amount of hydrogen per area of sunlight um, as we can on that small scale, which is really showing that in the future we could potentially bring this even bigger. It also shows that we can make hydrogen in this upscaled reactor with uh, microfibers for five days. Um, but I would like to caveat that a bit with the amount of hydrogen we're actually producing, which is still quite small. So it's the equivalent of about two milliwatt hours, which is roughly enough to charge your phone battery 0.1%. So you're not going to be charging your electronics from energy from plastic anytime in the next couple years. Um, but this is something we're really pushing forwards and we're hoping you will be able to, perhaps in 10 years. So to sum up, photoreforming is a technology that enables us to transform plastic into hydrogen using only the energy in sunlight. In doing so, we're addressing two global challenges, renewable fuel production and plastic pollution mitigation. 
And while we've had some promising proofs that we can make uh, this process work with a cheap and sustainable photocatalyst for many types of plastics, there's lots of work um, that my lab is working on in the moment to really try to bring this forward into something more commercially viable. So things like higher efficiencies, upscaling in a different type of flow system, um, and just getting more plastic uh, into this process. So I would welcome any questions and thank you very much for your attention. Brief questions, if you have them. Hi there. Uh, the six percent you had, if you mm -hmm. carried on for another fifty hours, what what sort of percentage would you expect? Yeah. So we have been able to get it up to fifty percent when I left it for about a month. <laughs> so it is possible to get much higher conversions. The problem is the catalyst is still just very slow at the moment. Oh, yeah, Hello. please. Um, you rather glossed over the other byproducts besides the hydrogen. Could you just yeah. expand very briefly on that? Yeah, um, so that's one of the key things we're trying to work on. So right now we kind of make a soup of chemicals. So it's things like formic acid, acetic acid, also known as vinegar. So it's nothing toxic, but the problem is right now it's a mixture, so we can't really use it for anything because it would be quite energy intensive to separate it out. So um, we've recently started a project where we're trying to add another catalyst onto the system that I talked about today, um, which will hopefully allow us to selectively transform the plastic into a single chemical, which we could then extract much more easily. Taylor, that's great. Thank you very much. A great example of the application of research to something really significant. Thank you. Thank you.